listening to Second Wind with Joyce Buford, where women who are ready to expand their life adventure discover the tools to stop playing small and tap into the courage required to enjoy their Second Wind. Welcome. And good morning. It's so great to have you here. Unless you're listening in the afternoon, and then it's even greater to have you here. Whenever I just welcome that you've chosen to come spend some time to us, time to us, with us. Uh, We are having a great guest today. Um, You know, there's a, I love the aging story, and we're all part of an aging story, you know. Um, when you're in your youth, you never believe you'll be a certain age. You never think you'll get to 50 or to 60 or to 70 or even on up into the 80s and the 90s. And all of us, are ex- <laughs> we dream it. We live in a fantasy, right? Because it is part of life. We get the young years, and then we have a period in there where we rightfully so, get to stand up for and support those parents that have helped us through the years. Some parents are better at it than others, but in my personal belief, it was my responsibility to be there for my mother and my father, however, he left very early in, in age. But anyway, so... There are decisions that need to be made as we progress. And certainly as healthcare has changed over the years, we are going we have fluxed again, so we're learning more things and with the the COVID and how it's affected our our lives, I think we'll even see more changes. So anyway, today's show is about giving you some insight into what is offered for taking care of parents or a sibling or a loved one going forward in in the aging process. So anyway, I'm looking forward to this because I'm always interested in knowing as I'm approaching that age, and I'll share it with my children, um, how we can better live our life out to the best, to the best, and knowing that we are living our life the way we want to live it. So that's uh, what we're going to be talking today. We are talking with Ruth Basilaki. Busilaki. Um, she is. How did it work? Did I get close to it? <laughs> She's the owner and operator of Synergy Home Care serving the greater Milwaukee, Wisconsin region. Her company has more than 100 employees who care for 150 clients, ranging from champion care, com- companion care, sorry, to 24-7 live-in care. She has owned her business for the last 10 years. Now, prior to purchasing Synergy, home care franchise. She was the director of special needs at Lutheran Social Services of Wisconsin and Upper Michigan from 1999 to 2010. She leads the development of residential and day programming at those two facil- at that facility. She also remains active in her local Alzheimer's and Parkinson's Association. Now, Ruth's hobbies, when she has time for this, we don't know, but when she like her hobbies are when she, of course, spending time with her five grandchildren and playing the ukulele. I love that. Oh, I love music. I graduated from Concordia University with a BA in Business Administration and Human Resources. So we're talking today with a really, really a well-informed, smart lady. So welcome, Ruth. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for having me on the show today. 
Oh, this is going to be really fun because I know for probably one or two of my listeners, they have probably never even thought of this stage where we get into uh, how do we care for our loved ones in their later years. And, and we're all faced with it. I was totally blown away when I was faced with it with my father first and then my mother later years. But I'm, I'm so curious of what was the, how did you get into this business? How did you decide you wanted to step into being the owner of a home care service and, and, uh, to help people make this transition? Sure. You know, I love the focus that you have in your show, that second wind. It relates in so many ways to what we're talking about, the topic, and also my own personal experiences. The first half of my career, I was an employee, a director nonetheless, and a leader, but still an employee of a business. And because my own parents owned a pharmacy, I had the opportunity as an adult to think about Would it ever be something that I would ever do? Would I ever open my own business? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the age of 46, it sort of surprised me (laughs) as much as anyone else that I'm going to venture and I'm going to open up my own home care business. But it (laughs) was because of my experiences. My Mm -hmm. professional experiences ended up helping my own parents. My father was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and we come from a big family where we advocate for one another like so many do, and we bring our talents. Mm -hmm. And I knew that my father wanted dignity of choice. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be treated like a unique individual with choice because he certainly didn't ask for a chronic health condition. And I also knew from experience in my in my professional world that my mother was going to become his primary caregiver, and this was going to have a toll on her as well. Yes. So that was what I did. I as that was my role in my family to watch over, look for subtle changes, benevolently probe my Uh my parents to make sure that I could then advocate for them get on top of those subtle changes, share with them the options, and help them fulfill their goals to live a dignified yeah. life and to live as healthy a life as possible. So it right. kind of fell into place after yeah. that experience. Well, you bring up a very, very, um, it's a situation that takes place, and I think all of us, whatever age, the the son and daughter have this question in their mind. And I know in my experience with my mother, I I was, my father died fairly quickly, but um, with my mother, it was more long-term. And so the question that I had, I can remember very clearly, when is mother ready? When is, when is a good time to make that face, that decision of how they're going to be cared for? So, I know that you probably have a guide or something for us that that could be something we could personally look for. Of course, I went immediately to her doctor because I was driving her there anyway to all of her doctors. And uh, that was one source for me. But even before that, there's some steps that are um, good things for us to look at. Yes, we um, over time, we've actually coined this term benevolent probing, because it really is out of love and consideration for our loved ones goals, right, Mm -hmm. that we're going to advocate for them. You have that experience, but it needing support if you choose to live in your own home. And 86% of seniors, according to a recent AARP study, said that 86% of the seniors choose to live in their own home if they can. Mm -hmm. They may very likely need some support. And that is not a light switch. You don't one day not need it. And the next day, it's crystal clear that you need help. So we have identified four key areas to watch for. You want to watch for activities of daily living. You want to watch for memory issues. You want to address mobility issues. 
and how are they engaging with others, social engagements, mental health, that type of thing. So those yeah. four key areas, and we can kind of elaborate on those four key areas, are the things that you want to do as you advocate for your loved one's desire to stay at home. So what are you talking about when you say activities of daily living? Yes, thanks for asking. So activities of daily living essentially means how do you go about your day? Uh, how do you get up and get dressed? Do you mm-hmm. need support? Is that difficult? How do you um, make sure that you're showering and bathing properly? How are you attending to um, your own meals? Are you keeping up with your nutrition? And so if we're looking at our loved one's activities of daily living and you're visiting with them, whether it's virtual or whether it's in person, do they look clean shaven? Um, do they look as though they've had a haircut recently? Are their clothes hanging off them? Is there, are you suspic- uh, suspicious mm. that maybe they're losing weight? Yeah. How does this look? How are they managing their day-to-day living? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, those are kind of, the, some of them are more difficult to, to get a read on, but I can see if they're eating right, then they don't lose weight as easily. Um, Mother chose to stay in her place longer than, uh, and we tried all the options, you know, bringing in people. We did not have a synergy here to (laughs) call on, but we're going to fix that, folks. Let's let's fix that, (laughs) absolutely. But uh, those are are definite signs that uh, some adjustment needs to be done to support your loved one. Yes. And, you know, an interesting thing to do as well when you talked about nutrition is opening up someone's refrigerator. It's a Mm -hmm. very telling event. And it could be that you're you're offering to help clean out the refrigerator, go through expired food. But, boy, is that a telling event. Uh Going, Going through the medication, the bottles, reviewing and making sure that they're staying on top of their medication, that's critical because, of course, medication is meant to keep us healthy and and to treat any conditions that we may have. And if you see that your loved one um, looks a little confused or they're not refilling their meds, that's a tip off that -hmm. perhaps they need just a little support managing those things. Those are the types of things that our Synergy home caregivers and personal assistants, we like to call them, can help with. Yeah. Yeah, I would say probably the trained support person that, uh, that would work with your company would be so beneficial. I mean, I would not have known um, really if mother was taking more medicine than she needed or, you know, because I just wouldn't have been well educated in that, you know. And that is, that's probably one of the very first things that people ask um, a Synergy home caregiver to do is keep an eye on mom's medication Make sure that she's reminding her to take her medication, mom or dad. Absolutely, I agree with you, Joyce. Sometimes that takes a trained eye to identify those subtle changes. But if you're concerned, then that's your tip as a family member or a loved one, that it's time to identify. You know, another area. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Another area of activity of daily living is how are they managing their bills? Oh, yeah. Um, For those of us that still use a checkbook, with a register, <laughs> uh, that can be a very telling document. So again, mm-hmm. offering, mom, could I help you get your bills organized? Most people are, are happy to have that help. But again, looking through it as a family mm-hmm. member can be a very telling event. Yes. Yeah. Lots of signs there. Um, the next one we talk about is kind of tricky because, you know, even at Age 50, you start forgetting where your keys are. You forgot, you forget names occasionally or stories or something. And But you're talking about more serious memory issues, right. aren't you? I would say so. Memory is a key area to cover. And how do you get across that, right? You can't ask yeah. someone if they've forgotten. That's, that's kind of, um, it's an impossibility. But really what you want to do is you want to start having conversations with your loved one that have open-ended answers. You, 
you want to get away from oh. yes, no questions mm -hmm. because it's very easy to answer. Instead, you know, asking a question, when was the last time you talked to your friend Mabel? And yeah. what did the two of you talk about? Mm. Asking mm. about, did you get the invitation for the um, wedding of your great niece? Ah, Do you yeah. have some ideas of what you'd like to um, purchase as a gift. You know, asking open-ended questions that relate to family, that mm. relate to friends, and that relate to recent history, recent memory. Studies oh. really show that yeah. we can retain old memories the longest. We retain yeah. our oldest memories the longest. So really when you're when you're doing that benevolent conversation, you want to ask about more recent and current events with open-ended questions. And that's a, a way to identify right. if yeah. there's some memory issues. Yeah. The next one is mobility. So we're talking about in the home or just mobility in general, how she gets around in the yard and um, all of the above, you know, oh. mobility is how easily do they get in and out of a chair? Yes. How safely do they walk? Are they um, grabbing onto furniture as they walk? That's a sign that maybe there's some issues with gait and mm -hmm. strength. Do they tire easily? And you can do that by a couple of ways. You can, visit with your family and take a tour of the home. Maybe you hadn't been there in a while. And again, with, with our um, keeping safe distance, you can do that even virtually and say, hey, mom, it's been so long since I've been in the home. Can you take me on a tour? Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you really are seeing how safely they get up and out. Mm -hmm. The goal to stay home for as long as possible, you need to make sure that that person is going to be safe and not have a fall. And a fall right. is the number the num one of the number one areas that land people in the hospital. And mm -hmm. that could be a series of, of unfortunate events um, that prevents their ability to stay home. So we want to prevent falling as much as possible. And mobility can be um, something that they can get some therapy to build up their strength. Mm -hmm. Our caregivers can help us with exercise because right. not yeah. all of us like to exercise. Right. Motivation. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of ways that we can get on top of that and prevent falls and prevent injury. Yeah. Uh, the fourth one is social engagement. Um, and tell us what you're meaning there. You know, one of the things, unfortunately, that we've discovered through COVID and isolation is that 25% of Americans who are 65 and older are considering themselves socially isolated. And that is leading to genuine health problems mm -hmm. as well as mental health problems. So yeah. it's social engagement is not only important for our mental health, but it's also important for our physical health. Mm -hmm. And it's a sign that perhaps this person needs to see someone face to face. Mm -hmm. With COVID, especially many of the senior communities for all the right reasons, and according to the CDC, are limiting who's able to come into the building. And right. at Synergy Home Care, boy, we are getting calls more and more often from families saying they're only allowing professional services to come in, and I need someone to go in and have a face-to-face -face visit with my mother even once a week. Right. And assure us that, in fact, she is doing fine. We're doing just that now visiting with families just for companionship, just for another set of eyes to mm -hmm. help them socially engage. And so asking those questions, who have you seen recently, mom? Who have you talked to recently? Tell me about that conversation. Are you still visiting and, and calling at least your, your bridge ladies, you know, to mm. really get a sense on how isolated are they so that we can prevent hopefully depression and further health issues? Right. Yeah. Um, yes, there. it seems in this pan pandemic that we've experienced, um, there was not really a, a one rule for every home. And so uh, there was confusion around a lot of that, whether they could go visit their, their uh, family members in a home. Now, when you're talking about uh, in their home, 
then you certainly do have that isolation factor. And when somebody's in their home, I don't care if they're 50, 55, 60, they're also going to be stressed out, particularly if they're a, a, a social butterfly like mm-hmm. me. I mean, that was just long and, and very uh, difficult at times. You know, without a doubt, we are actually getting calls from families saying, I would like to go on a Zoom call with my mother, but she doesn't know how to operate oh, um, the computer and Zoom. Could you yeah. come once a week, do some laundry, you know, make a meal or two, and then help set up my call with my mother? You know, oh, that's, that's great. Simple <laughs> function, isn't it? And yes. And boy, does that accomplish a lot. It gives such peace of mind for the family members. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's great. I love that. I mean, and we don't know, uh, that's an ongoing thing, not just with, let's say COVID goes away. Right. (laughs) right. I'm being very optimistic here. And so, but what a great thing to do, particularly if they're far away or in another city, this would be a great comfort to their, to their family to be able to do or missing an event, a family event. I've got, I was so impressed with all the creativity of how, I mean, people went to funerals through social media. They went to weddings. They went to graduation. (laughs) I mean, it was awesome. We're getting creative, aren't we? We are. As a society. And I I think we're much more creative than we were before COVID, COVID because we were forced to go into using some of the social media that we already had, but we just weren't using it that way. So I want to also touch on um, when, when is the right time to relinquish your driver's license? When is the right (gasps) time to stop driving? Um, I know. Very delicate. Oh, it's so delicate. And you talked earlier about looking to the the medical professionals for help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, that's a great place to go. It relieves the family of the feeling that they forced a family member, their loved one, to give up their license. Mm-hmm. And, but, but the truth is there's also a family member or someone who's an objective party who sees the day-to-day might be able to pick those subtle changes up before they go to the doctor. And so we always say if you have still a driver's license and family's concerned. It's really not just about, I've been driving since I, you know, I was 18 years old and I've been doing fine all these years. It's mostly about eyesight, loss mm. of sense, reflexes. Mm-hmm. And so if you see someone's car in the garage and you see new dings and scratches, um, and that even could be a, a, a Zoom call as well, you know, um, give me a tour of the car. I haven't seen it in ages. When <laughs> Things and scratches, you know, yeah. you really do need to act. Yeah. That's one of those times you don't want to um, be respectful of their choice and say, I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope nothing happens, you know, mm-hmm. for the safety of themselves and for others out yeah. on the road. You really want to, want to, as a family, get together and say, we need to act on this. And that's, again, the solution could be that a caregiver can be their personal private chauffeur and and get those um, uh, errands accomplished and and go on fun trips that maybe mm-hmm. they were reluctant to do because they sense themselves that their driving isn't as astute as it used to be. Now it gives them more freedom. Yes. Yeah. Um, even some of the public services, the cabs offers, I think, some sort of program. Um, at least they did here. I don't know if they do in the bigger cities, but certainly it's much better and nicer to go with somebody that you know and you recognize, such as yeah. the caregiver would be. So I really, but the the taking away the driver's license is so, and the car is so, it's a delicate subject to um, and to actually yeah. sell to your parent. 
you know, depending, yeah. I had a very resistant parent. <laughs> so I, I did go to the doctor and she left him <laughs> right after that, <laughs> after Absolutely. he said, yes, you need to. And, um, but it is very delicate, it, but it's a, it's a subject that needs to be addressed because of what, not only the, da- the, the damage they could do to the car or to themselves, but also to other people. So it's so serious, and it opens the family up for all sorts of legal issues. So that's really important. So those are four areas that really are important for um, the children or the caregivers, the family unit, to take a look at to determine if mom or aunt or whoever the, the senior is that's needing more support. So we are going to briefly go to a short break where you will learn about something wonderful that you can bring into your life. But, you know, I wanted to say to Ruth, just before we do check out, is that benevolent probing is your way of saying benevolent questioning? Yes, It's a gentle way of saying, I'm going to ask questions that may, we have a difficult time with that when it comes to our parents, because we have such great respect for them. Yes. So we want to give the adult child permission. This is a benevolent way to advocate for your loved one by asking probing questions, Mm -hmm. questions to get to the bottom of what's really going on. Right. You know, you talk about the loss of independence by giving up, uh, you know, your driver's license and the ability to drive. Mm -hmm. But what we recognize at Synergy Home Care is that a little bit of support actually maintains your independence. Mm. It's people off your back, you know. Yeah. They're not so much worried about you anymore because you've got the supports around you of the areas that they're concerned about and they're, right. they're leaving you alone, you know? Um, and so we want to maintain independence with a little bit of support. Right. Well, I love the idea of, of staying in the residence. There's not that major problem of changing and moving to a new environment and getting all accustomed to a new environment. So when we come back, we're going to be talking more with Ruth about that very important transition time in everybody's life. Transformational coach, motivational speaker, and author Joyce Buford returns after this short break. Close your eyes and imagine living your life without limits. Where would you go? Who would you meet? What would you do? During an Uncover Your Hidden Genius session, you will discover what's keeping you from living your life with purpose, passion, and fulfillment of your potential. You'll get a clear vision of the steps you need to take to uncover your hidden genius so that you can live a life without limits. Sessions can be done over the phone, Skype, or in person. Find out more at www.JoyceBufordEmpowers.com or by calling 903-287-0747. Dallas Fort Worth area where every spring we seem to get pummeled with hailstorms. What's another name for a thunderstorm? A cockeyed bob. The Guinness Book of World Records states the largest known hailstone in U.S. history was over seven inches in diameter. That's almost the size of a soccer ball. The famous hailstone was found in central Nebraska in June 2003. But if we think the hail's bad here in Texas, I guess it's better than living in parts of Africa, where they average 130 days of hailstorms each year. Other hail-prone areas include India, Russia, China, and Italy. The Aussies call hailstones, drift ice, glazed frost, pancake ice, and frost flowers. I wonder how they measured hail before the invention of the golf ball. It's words you never heard. I'm Carolyn Davidson, and you can have fun challenging your words you never heard vocabulary with my free app, Too Funny for Words. Welcome back to this segment of Second Win. Joyce Buford. The author of Effortless Happiness continues in this segment to share insights that will help you live a life of greater purpose and filled with happiness. 
Now here's our host, author and coach, Joyce Buford. Welcome back. We are talking today with Ruth Basalaki, and uh, she is owner and operator of Synergy Home Care. So, Ruth, uh, tell us why you were called to do what you do now, which is manage a health uh, facility, home care facility. Why were you drawn to this? Well, you know, it's wonderful to be asked the question because sometimes you forget to even think about what led you to such a a, a life-changing moment. It really was my own personal experience, eight-year journey for my father who had Parkinson's disease Mm -hmm. and wanting to support him and give back to him and my mother and help them on that journey. When I reflected back on that, I I recognized that there were subtle changes that I recognized that my brothers and sisters did not. And it's only because it was my professional experience. They all brought their profession to the table to help my parents. But this one subtle change and helping my parents identify those subtle changes of condition so that they could fulfill their goals Uh helped reflect and say, could I offer that kind of support to others? Mm -hmm. And could I educate others about what their options are? Because the options have changed dramatically in the last even 10 years, much less 30 years. And so I thought that's something I could do. So I looked around and found that a Synergy Home Care franchise, what we do at Synergy is we Well, we have, first of all, I think there are about 350 Synergy offices all across the country. Wow. It's it's an amazing service. And what we do. How large was it when you bought it? Oh, I think it was about half that 10 years ago. We've really Uh grown along with the need for support and the need and the desire to stay home. And so what we do as owners is we meet individually with families in our communities who have a desire to stay home, whether they live in a senior community, whether they live in their own home or apartment, whatever it may be, then we match up what their supports are to maintain their independence with our caregivers. And our caregivers can help them with housekeeping, laundry, transportation, as we talked about earlier, and errands, Mm -hmm. fun errands, not just, you know, things that are necessary, helping with meal preparation, helping them with mobility issues and personal care. And and again, as I was saying earlier, lately it's been a lot about just companion care, the fear of depression and isolation. We can help someone stay in their own home once a week Uh to 24 hours a day. So how how do you find somebody to do that job? Sure. What are you looking for when you're looking for a home care support person? When we're looking for the right caregiver, and caregiver isn't always the appropriate word because sometimes it is a companion mm-hmm. or a personal assistant. Mm-hmm. The is, as owners, we look for people of all diverse backgrounds. Right. Backgrounds inexperienced or with experience, mm-hmm. with different life stories. Um, different ages, because our goal, honestly, is to match the caregiver with the client's needs. Mm. Fit. Mm. Mm -hmm. And because we focus on that at Synergy, we find that the retention of our caregivers is greater than average because we're matching them up. We're matching Mm. up a caregiver who loves to cook with someone who needs help with cooking. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we're matching up a companion who loves to craft with a client who would love to continue crafting, but maybe they're having some mobility issues or some hand um, fine motor issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're, We're looking for someone to brighten up their day. And when they walk in a room, that caregiver brightens up everybody's day. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's something to look forward to. And, and, and so, really, we look for a diverse population of caregivers to match up with our diverse population of clients. I want to say that I, because this came to mind when you were talking about matching up 
Um, and again, uh, pardon me, I just have my own experience, and so I'm sharing that. But um, I was so impressed with the people that love to do that work, and I'm sure they do with your company, that yeah. they enjoy older people. Yes. And, do you know and what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, not everybody I, I, likes to do that. Uh, one hundred with one hundred percent. We there are so many different career choices in this world, and um, caregiving. We hear that often that it takes a special person to be a caregiver. Mm -hmm. My background: I was a CNA, a certified nursing assistant, when I was in my early twenties, and I've always been in this industry, in one way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And so I've had time to reflect on that. You know, when people mm -hmm. say that, oh, it takes a special person to be a caregiver. I think. I can speak on behalf of the caregivers of the world to say <laughs> that we have learned a, a secret. It's not what we give to others that's rewarding. It's what we learn from the people that we care for. Ah. We love to get back from this person, to learn their life experiences, to share stories with them. That's what enriches a caregiver. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the best kind of caregiver is the one who's going to open up those conversations. Share with me, um, Mrs. Jones, um, how did you get through a situation like, like a pandemic? You know, what's mm -hmm. your advice? How, how do you want to, um, how would I approach taking care of my children in this time? Our seniors have lots to give. And none of us, it's human nature to be independent. So none of us want to accept help from others. But if our seniors can give back knowledge and wisdom and joy to our caregivers, then that's a mutual relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a really, really rewarding, enriching relationship. And they, uh, they really develop quite a bond. They almost rely on those people as much as they do family because we may not interact with our parents like they do on a day-to-day. -day. Oh, yes, please. No, I was just saying dated or day-to-day. -day. If you are, are serving somebody day-to-day, -day, then probably we haven't seen our parents day-to-day. -day. Some would. Some would. Home dynamics vary, very quite a bit but um it isn't it is interesting sometimes i i will say i i i used to uh my mother in her later years was in a facility and and the nurses loved to go in and be with my mother because she was so funny but i never mm. really saw my mother as being funny and I love that she was, they just enjoyed her so much. So it's kind of interesting. As children, we can't always see all of the uh, qualities. It Maybe it just doesn't come out. Your mother brightened their day. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> looked forward to seeing her. Yeah. So it, I just, I thought it was so funny. Uh, you know. Joyce, can I share some stories of some clients and the, and the way in which... Oh. The varying ways in which we can uh, Synergy Home Care can support them. Right. I, I think about that person who calls us themselves and and says to us, "I have a, a an aching chronic health condition, but I want to continue enjoying life. So could mm -hmm. I hire one of your assistants to come and do my laundry, <laughs> change mm -hmm. my bed sheets, make mm -hmm. me some meals?" take me um, to my uh, activities and, and my hobbies, and we're happy to help that person. And we yeah. love when we get those calls because that's the person who says, I want to enjoy mm -hmm. this final stage of life. Mm -hmm. it's, it, should be, it should be celebrated. And I don't want to spend my time and energy wasting my energy on something that I could hire someone else to do, like wandering. And so we applaud that individual because they're more likely to identify subtle changes and get on top of them and treat those subtle changes. They're more likely to fulfill their goals. Yeah. yeah. I had a situation uh, when I 
first started the business, this is one family I've never forgotten. <laughs> I got a frantic call from a daughter who said, we need to move mom into an assisted living. But in the meantime, can you come and provide caregivers? So we met that night, three daughters and mom. And mom lived in a senior independent living apartment for the last 15 years. That was home to her. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. She had diabetes. And so she had to monitor her medication and her nutrition, and she was having some um, eyesight issues. And so her daughters were rightfully concerned about staying healthy, managing her medication, eating properly. So we arranged having one of our caregivers come for a few hours, Monday through Friday. And in the morning, that caregiver would arrive to make sure that Lois took her medication Mm -hmm. Had a nice, fixed her a nice, healthy breakfast. Mm -hmm. Lois had no problem telling the caregiver what housekeeping item needed to be accomplished that day, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. And before mm -hmm. the caregiver left, she would fix a lunch and put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Three nice. hours, five days a week. It was such a small amount of service. But remember, the family said, we're looking for assisted living. And so this is just a, a transitional time. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened is the daughters started worrying less. And when our caregivers saw subtle changes in Lois, they would reach out to Lois and say, you might want to schedule an appointment with your doctor because it looks as though, you know, your, um, your blood sugars aren't, aren't what they mm -hmm. used to be. You know, subtle things like that. We could right. Catch yeah. Yeah, that's really important. Later, she had never moved. She never moved from the place she called home, and she was able to die in her own bed. Mm. And so we were able to help her fulfill her goal. And, and so that was such a great story because the family, rightfully concerned about mom, didn't know that there were other options and that they mm. could advocate for their mother and help her fulfill her own goals. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that transition is really, it's a big one, and it's kind of elusive sometimes in yeah. that you just can't, unless you see your parents regularly, um, almost daily, You there's quite easy to overlook something that would be a key thing, just as you pointed out. I, I would agree, and I think that's one of the reasons at Synergy Home Care, we offer ourselves out to the greater community to say, if you have any questions or concerns at all, you don't mm -hmm. have to know what the answer is or what the solution is. Simply reach out to us mm -hmm. and we'll walk you through and we'll listen to your story because your story is unique and individual mm -hmm. to you. And we'll provide some solutions, right. which may or may not be the right fit, but, but you don't know what you don't know. Right. So until we can have that conversation, Family members are going to lay up at night worrying about their loved one, and their loved one is going to do everything they can to try to maintain their independence, perhaps not realizing that they would have a better chance of maintaining right. their independence with a little bit of help. Now, I have a question for you. When you decided to go into this business and decided to pick Synergy Home Care, did you create the name or you bought it as a it, the name was already there. So, yes, Synergy yeah. Home Care was created by our founder, Peter Torian. Oh, okay. And it's due to the fact that this relationship that we have with our client is a synergistic relationship. It's oh, not okay. one-sided in any way, shape, or form. It involves the individual, their family, mm -hmm. their medical professionals, and our caregivers. And so it truly is synergistic. So in looking at the possibilities of other facilities that you could purchase, this one you chose because of that personal touch or yes. integrity of the company? Yes, without a doubt. Yes. With the personal touch, the um, ability to focus on what are seniors interested in, what is, what's the latest trend, and what are the... the um, the resources that are going to make our ability to care for them streamlined and mm -hmm. efficient. And mm -hmm. that research and that development and that trend setting, I personally didn't want to focus on that. I wanted to focus on the people. 
in my community who need our support and matching them up with good quality caregivers. And so that's what I saw that was really above and beyond any other home care provider that I looked at was that Synergy is always looking at research and development, always looking at the client being the first and foremost reason to um, make our business efficient and and build our business with integrity. And so having um, software that tracks when a caregiver comes and leaves the assignment so we know for sure that they've arrived, that gives family huge peace of mind. And even with my experience in this industry, I wasn't aware of that until I talked to Synergy. Yeah. Is there even something that a family could use that would highlight some of the questions that need to be asked or concerned with? Yes. If someone has a concern, that's Mm -hmm. your trigger to act. And Mm -hmm. if they would like to call us at Synergy Home Care or Mm -hmm. um, go on to SynergyHomeCare.com, what they're going to find among all sorts of resources is a 13-point home safety checklist. Um, At the end of September, there was a week called Fall Prevention Week. And so we created this 13-point checklist that a family member can do on their own. And it addresses things like, Um, Does your family have an emergency procedure in place? Mm. Is the home appropriately prepared and and arranged in case of a fire? Um, The bathrooms and the bedrooms, the most dangerous rooms in our home, how are they arranged or are there grab bars to prevent falling? Mm -hmm. And we've even talking um, in our checklist, we've even addressed issues around covid Um, Are you using best practices to prevent the spread of COVID? Do you Mm -hmm. have enough um, personal protective equipment in the home? Are you checking temperatures daily? And that is one of the issues. That was one I was going to wonder, I was wondering about. You know, every place we go, they check our temperature. So, yeah, do you do that? So Our caregivers do that. Our caregivers not only check their own symptoms Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. every shift, but they're also monitoring the client's symptoms. And we know those symptoms can be subtle. Oh, and yeah. so it's a huge peace of mind for the families of our clients to know that they've got face-to-face visits, checking and monitoring their health. I think what I see if you agree with me, I think the services such as inter, uh, Synergy Home Care have grown so much in this day and time because of distancing of families? Is that, is that one of the major reasons that you think this industry has really grown? I I would agree that distant family relationships has, has um, created more of a necessity. Whereas maybe 40 years ago, family took care of family. Mm -hmm. However, the advantages now um, are, are greater. When family took care of families, because it was par- in part because the options were limited. Yeah. It was a large institutional like nursing home or family, right? Uh-huh. And now we have so many options, and you can combine a, a series of those options to get the right fit for you. And so um, we're in a better place now because you have so many more options and you create a plan that's unique to you and family can continue being a family member when you hire a professional to do the caregiving. Yeah. And, and I always recommend to families retain the relationship as much as possible. If we're coming in to help a spouse, let Mm. the husband and wife be husband and wife as much as possible and let the caregiver do the personal care because that's where you dip into that caregiving role. And we want them to retain their relationship as much as possible. Well, I could see working with the caregiver would be a great advantage over the family in recognizing signs, health signs, um, memory signs, all sorts of signs that they have that, that would say we need a doctor's 
visit or a, a medication adjustment or whatever that would be. You but know, I, can, at, I can see advantage there. Yeah. Absolutely. And at Synergy Home Care, we train our employees, our caregivers, to notify us if there are subtle changes in their client's condition because that's how we get on top of that. We get on yeah. top of those subtle changes and address them and adjust their care so that they can get the professional support they need, the medical support they need, that the, the care plan is created to maximize their ability to stay home. For right. So, so let me ask you this question for someone out there. If they're needing financial support or what does a family have now to draw on to help with sure. support? From you know, the good news is that there are funding options when mm -hmm. someone is saying, I want to invest in the ability to stay home. That's both a financial investment, whether they move to an assisted living or whether they stay home. We know that that's an investment. Yeah. And so their long-term care insurance mm -hmm. is one of those options where a person can tap into their long-term care insurance policy to stay home. We also, across the country, have access to veterans benefits through oh. pensions and mm -hmm. some health care benefits to maintain independent living. Mm -hmm. Across the country, people will find respite grants, grants to give respite, and respite simply means a break to the family mm -hmm. caregiver. So if there's a primary family caregiver providing support, our government has identified that if they don't get a break, then that family caregiver themselves is going to have some health and um, mental health and physical health issues. So our government typically will support that in terms of a grant. Yeah. And, and we always at Synergy Home Care, that's part of that resource assessment. And let's see what is out there to provide a truly comprehensive care plan for you Mm -hmm. and let you review that before then you say, I want to invest in, in this option. The right. one thing we know is when someone takes on the average amount of care, which is usually a 12 hours a week on average across mm -hmm. the country, that is still thousands of dollars less than moving to an assisted living. Yeah. And they probably like the food better. <laughs> right. That's right. my mother never liked the food sure. <laughs> and you know when you go into institutional food uh prep i mean you have to you have to prepare and serve the food kind of blandly. I mean, it can be good, but it's because there's, you're feeding so many different people with with diet restrictions it's normally has to be a certain standard. It can't be all the creams and sauces and salt and all that other stuff that we got used to at home. <laughs> Can I share a story? Speaking of food, I'd love to share a story yes. about a husband and wife who needed our services. Uh -huh. um, Italian Sicilian couple came directly from Sicily. She had Parkinson's disease and he was beginning to show signs of Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. And so their children called and said, we would like service for both mom and dad, and we'd like them to stay at home. Mm -hmm. And so we at Synergy Home Care ended up providing 24-hour care for this family. Mm. Now, because of her Parkinson's disease, her ability to cook was severely limited. Yeah. But with her Parkinson's disease, she still was able to make decisions. It did not impact her cognitively. So we started services. We had, you know, 20 some year old caregivers in the home. I checked in on them after the first week of care. A few days later, checked in, and this lovely Sicilian woman was teaching my employees to make homemade pasta. <laughs> I became jealous because those employees of ours were <laughs> learning to cook better than I had ever cooked in my life. And oh I, my goodness. This is a legacy that yeah. she can pass on to all those lovely Synergy caregivers. They will uh, know for that. That's so true. Well, those are all the joys that come across and the surprises that come across in your business. But I'm sure you have many of them and many really great 
memories of of people that you've met across through the years. Absolutely. Um, but if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that if they have questions? I would say the best thing to do is to Google <laughs> SynergyHomeCare.com. You'll get uh, our phone number. Someone will speak to you live. Okay. If you call, if you choose to call uh, after after Googling, or you can download information and, and look at it at your um, comfort and time zone. But that's yeah. the best way to get started. Take that first step. It yeah. helps you peace of mind at night that I, there are solutions out there to my unique situation. Yeah. Ruth, thank you so much for being with us today. You know, it's You're it's so great welcome. to get information. It helps us prepare for the, whatever transition is coming in our lives and for our loved ones. So I know you provided a lot, my listeners a lot of good information today. And uh, I just thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah. Now, as we go through the week coming up, I know you're going to be thinking about what's new that I'm doing this week, what's n- what's the same routine I'm doing this week. But the most important thing I'd like to ask you, another, another phrase I'd like for you to ask is, how can I do this differently? Or is this the best way to be doing this? Now, the only reason I say that is for self-reflection. And sometimes you'll get an answer that will really indeed surprise you. So I'm looking forward to this coming week for me because I'm going to be asking that question. So thank you for being here. I look forward to having you with me next week. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.